Essay 39. Consequences of B3 for photon mass. When I first inferred B3 on a snowy afternoon in November 1991, it seemed little more than common sense. Always a dangerous thing, thing to say in the dogma-ridden world of theoretical physics. As I often did, I was working at home as a private scholar away from Cornell Theory Center, which I attended in the mornings, being linked in to two supercomputers from home. The first three papers on B3 were published in Physica B and are available in the Omnia Opera section of www.ais.us. I was trying to rationalize the idea of a Piekara Kielich conjugate product in non-linear optics. It seemed to me that this object existed in two dimensions and that its vector cross product should produce a magnetic flux density in the axis of propagation. Evidently, the referees of the first three Physica B papers had no objection. I wrote to Mansell Davis back in Krikirth about the idea, and he accepted it with great enthusiasm, immediately recommending it for a Nobel Prize by writing that he had never seen anything more worthy of a prize. <coughs> for a hard-headed skeptic, that was unusual. I also discussed B3 by letter with Stanislav Kierich, who was very ill, but who was my co-editor of the first edition of Modern Nonlinear Optics. He also accepted it with enthusiasm. In January 1993, Jean-Pierre Vigier became the fourth or fifth major scientist to accept the idea of B3 enthusiastically and invited a paper on it to Physics Letters A. Taishi Kurata had also begun to work on its industrial applications but did not communicate until about the mid-90s. Among less well-known scientists to accept the idea was Justin Huang, an expert in photon mass. The dogma of the time was that the photon must be massless, because otherwise the Lagrangian is not invariant at the UN gauge transformation. The idea of photon mass, although proposed by Einstein in about 1906, did not agree with the fashionable theory of the time, gauge theory. Broca proposed an equation for the massive boson in the mid-30s, so the Broca equation is not U1 gauge invariant, which is a big problem for standard physics, which still adheres to U1 like glue. In standard physics, mass is defined by the first Casimir invariant of the Poincaré group, which was developed by Wigner in 1939. The definition of the first Casimir invariant is the same as the Einstein energy equation. If the mass is zero, this equation becomes E equals Cp, where E is the total relativistic energy and P the relativistic momentum. The dogma claims that light travels at C in a vacuum, so in special relativity the infinitesimal line element is zero. This is known as a null geodesic. There is no rest frame for the massless photon. The Lorentz transform runs into difficulties because the gamma factor of Lorentz is infinite for a photon traveling at sea. This means that the mass must be zero. A photon of zero mass travels at sea and can never be at rest. A very strange idea to anyone who stands outside the dogma of theoretical physics. In special relativity, the second Casimir invariant is spin, defined in terms of the pauli lubanski pseudo-vector. For a massless particle, the second invariant is also zero, meaning that the energy momentum four vector must be proportional to the pauli lubanski pseudo-vector. The proportionality constant is the helicity. Why this should be integral or half-integral is not known, in the standard theory of the Poincaré group. The latter reverses sign with parity, and from these properties, the standard physics asserts that the massless photon has only two senses of polarization, and that these must be transverse. So there is no B3 field in standard physics, meaning that one axis, Z, of three-dimensional space, X, Y, Z, is missing.
an absurd dogma that runs into many difficulties. For example, it implies the existence of a group E2 that has no physical meaning and demands the removal of the time-like and longitudinal polarizations using the arbitrary gupta bloiler method. Canonical quantization of electromagnetic field runs into severe difficulties. If the photon mass is restored to physics, the electromagnetic field has four senses of polarization, time-like, two transverse and one longitudinal along the axis of propagation. So the B3 field is allowed when the photon has mass, however tiny. Therefore, the inverse Faraday effect caused by B3 can be interpreted as definitive evidence for photon mass, in whose pursuit Vigia has spent a lifetime of distinguished work. The idea of U1 gauge invariance comes from the structure of the Maxwell heavy side theory, which must be replaced by Proca theory for a finite photon mass. The ECE wave equation gives the Proca equation the limit of a free electromagnetic field and not the D'Alembert equation associated with a massless photon. The B3 field in ECE theory is associated with a geometry that gives rise to the Proca equation. The B3 field has turned out to be the key to a unified field theory because it is defined in terms of the spin connection term in the first Cartan structure equation. Its inference also led to the abandonment of gauge theory in favour of general relativity, and it is seen more and more as a major discovery of physics.